increase of love about the cuts that are starting to be implemented as we speak. They've already started to notice many, many of the ER nurses. And I want to tell you about how those cuts are going to impact the care that we're able to give you as nurses. And we want you to be aware of that. Knowledge is power. You need to know what's going on there. And you need to hear it from the frontline caregivers. The data is clear and the data is undeniable. When our, when our ends have too many patients to care for, patient safety and patient uh, outcomes are dangerously and dramatically affected. How many are too many patients? I want you to first take a look at that stack of papers that we have there. That is research that goes back to 2003, right up to today, that shows that having more than four patients on a nurse's assignment, depending on where they are, different if they're in an ICU setting, but having more than four causes a 7% increase in injury or deaths for those patients. Remember, Lemon Star RNs will now be forced to care for up to six patients at a time. That is the new standard that the hospital will the hospital is forcing upon its nurses. More statistics that should definitely give you pause. Every additional patient assigned to an RN is also associated with a 7% increase in the risk of hospital acquired pneumonia, 53% increase in respiratory failure, and 17% increase in medical <coughs> complications. They just sound like numbers to most of you, and you might wonder why you're at risk for these things to happen, all right? Um, you need a nurse present to be able to do critical assessments on their patients. You need a nurse present to be able to look at labs, look at test results, be your Excuse me. Be your advocate working alongside with um, doctors and other staff to be able to advocate for maybe a change in your treatment. Hey doc, this is going on. Did you notice these vital signs? They've really plummeted. Look at this lab work. It's terrible. If you think that nurses have too many patients, you can certainly imagine how many patients doctors have. If we are not there to bring vital information to them, to be observing what is going on with the patients, something is going to get missed. And this is what happens. Inadequate nursing staffing levels have been a factor in nearly 25% of the most serious life-threatening events that have been reported to the Joint Commission in the last five years. There were three separate incidences out at Cooley Dickinson Hospital in Northampton, also a small community hospital. They had three patients, a laboring mom and two babies that died. And when those cases were reviewed, DPH stated that it was attributed, their deaths were attributed to failure to provide quality of care. Those nurses in those particular instances were being asked to do unrealistic assignments. Um, much like you're going to hear about the combined units with uh, labor and delivery, labor and delivery, maternity, and pediatrics. They want to combine those units. This is what's happening. And then a charge nurse is told, you be in charge of these specialty areas, and guess what else? You carry an assignment. Sometimes you're told to carry a full assignment. They cannot be an adequate resource to be the stopgap that they need to be to intervene when these dangerous situations arise. And that's what happened in this particular case. It will happen more often if we continue to increase the staffing ratios of your nurses. So 
What is UMass Health Alliance Lancaster Hospital's justi justification for these dangerous cuts in RN staffing? Simple. Greed and not need. I have sat at many, many reduction in force meetings and we as nurses have asked, why are you doing this? We are making money. Lemonster Hospital is really the jewel of the UMass system. We have some of the best and safest outcomes for our patients. Um, the lowest amount of re return patients, repetitive patients, coming in with the same diagnoses. But when they start increasing these assignments, we no longer will be able to give this community the care that it needs and deserves. But I will tell you personally, as they have sat there and said, we're cutting this area, we're cutting that area, I have yet to hear our senior management team say, guess what we're doing to help the cause? I'm going to take a cut. I don't need the huge money and huge packages that I need, but I need to take care of my community here. They don't belong to this community, most of them. Uh, they come from far, far, far. <laughs> they do not have to walk to the grocery store and see your faces. They don't have to greet you in church and see your faces. It's easy to get in their cars and drive two hours home and forget about what's going on at Lemonster Hospital. But we know, and if you look at this stack of evidence, that it is, abundant, it is abundantly known um, that the opposite is true. Safe patient limits have a positive association with financial performances and competitive health hospital markets. Um, in this day and age, reimbursements, a lot of reimbursements um, are linked to our diagnoses and us following certain standards of care. There is an expectation that we will provide proper and adequate care, safe care for our patients. And once we do that, they will be able to go home and manage safely. Um, what happens is if I have six patients and I am running like crazy, and this is the norm, so from the minute you hit the emergency room where they're overwhelmed with an overabundance in patients and not enough staff, to when you're admitted to our floors and then subsequently discharged, it is very difficult as a nurse to have the time to be able to give you the proper education that you need so that you can go home and you can manage your diseases at home or you can go home and take care of your, your wound properly or you can even go home and take care of your newborn baby properly. We don't have time to give you that education. We're educated to do that and we want to do that. But we need to have a few minutes to sit down. Some people are given these horrific new diagnoses. They need time, people need time to take it all in, to be able to sit with their nurse and ask questions, to maybe be able to do a dressing in front of your nurse or give yourself your first insulin injection. But if you don't have, have time to feel comfortable, you're not going to manage well when you go home. And guess what, when you come back in with that same problem in less than 30 days, we're not going to get covered for it. We're not going to get paid for it. So it just makes financial sense to do it right the first time. Hospitals should re reconsider reducing nursing staff as this is inefficient and can negatively affect financial performance. Well, we've been talking about the hospital, that's exactly what they should do. It seems to be falling on deaf ears, and that's why we have you here tonight. You need to become educated on this, and you need to help us too, and we'll tell you later what the takeaway is and what, what the call to action is going to be. Um, so a quote worth remembering, and this is from our new CEO, Deborah Wayman at Lemonster Health Alliance. She said that 
The changes won't hurt the hospital's efficiency. If anything, we'll be able to treat more people, she said. I, again, sat at one of our um, reduction in force meetings, and I was told by one of the nurse managers during one of those meetings, Diane, you will be able to take care of six patients better than you can take care of four. And I looked at her kind of dumbfounded, and I said, I, I don't get it, what do you mean? Well, first it was dead silence across the table. I said, how can, how can I do this? Tell me how, and she had no response. And then she said, oh, things will be more efficient, you'll be able to do it. I asked again, well, what are these new processes in place? How are things gonna be more efficient? Tell me about them so I'm not so worried. Again, silence. They don't know. But they can tell you that I can take care of six better than four. Um, and just to kind of tie all of this up, I'm going to share a couple of personal examples that I have come across in my nursing career. I've, I've been a nurse uh, 13 years out at Worcester Memorial and then 13 years here at Health Alliance. And at one point in my career when we had pretty appropriate staffing levels, I ran across a patient of mine um, and I was told in report, He's not doing well. He's probably going to pass on during your shift. Uh, went about seeing all my excuse me, patients, went in to talk to him. He was still coherent enough, um, but he was definitely, you know, going through the dying process. There was no doubt about it. And he said to me, he was on a morphine drip for pain control, and he said to me, the thing that I fear most is dying by myself. He had no family, he had no one there. And I said, don't worry, I will be there and I will help you with that. I was able to do that because I had enough patients, a, a small enough assignment. And it was a powerful experience for me and I hope a very positive um, process for him to go through. He didn't feel alone and I was there. Um, one of my later experiences when I was working on a night shift, I had this insane number of patients. I had 11. 11. We either had 10 or 11 on the night shift at that point. Um, the halls were kind of dark, and most of you know if you've been in a hospital at night, the lights go down. Um, we we'll try to make it a little quieter so the patients might get some sleep. And so, all you really saw in the hall were nurses scurrying around as quick as they could to get to their patients, put out fires, make sure everyone was safe. And I remember coming out of one of my patient's rooms and I looked, it was a long hallway where I was working. I looked at the end of the hall and I saw a person and it was, it was a female, um, a young female, and she was naked and she was on her knees. And she was a very, um, bad diabetic. She had had a, her blood sugar drop very extremely low. She got up, she had no idea where she was. She <coughs> managed to crawl out into the hall naked because people were so busy. And I ran down to a sister. She was in very poor condition and we actually ended up coding her. And that was a, just a very awful, awful experience in my career. And that is what will happen as these numbers go up. Thank you.